Welcome to Greensboro, North Carolina, and Southern Conference basketball as you come inside the Greensboro Coliseum. UNCG playing host to Wofford. Hi again, everybody, along with Daryl Kozak. I'm Scott Perswanski. Thanks so much for being with us here tonight. Game of the week by far in the SoCon, Daryl. The only two teams which are still undefeated in league play. Yeah, Wofford, UNCG have had some great battles over the past several years, some in the, in the SoCon tournament. UNCG fortunate to win four straight, hoping to make it five tonight. Well, goes without saying, we will see two of the best in the Southern Conference yeah. on the floor here tonight. Yeah, Francis Alonzo, Fletcher McGee. You know, Fletcher just set the SoCon all-time three-point record, so he's been all over ESPN. Alonzo leading this team in scoring. They've been rivals for many years now, going back, back and forth. When you look at the scouting reports from both, both teams, the very first name on each report is each other. Fletcher and Alonzo, so we're going to have a fun battle watching those two guys play against each other tonight. He's a really, really good shooter as you look at the starting lineup for Wofford McGee, Storm Murphy, the sophomore point guard. Hoover has shown the ability to score big at times. And in the middle, Cameron Jackson will be a load for the Spartans to deal with here tonight, Darren. Yeah, whenever time I watch Wofford play, especially when they play high-level teams, he's the guy they're going to. He's the one that's setting the tone inside, rebounding, being a presence on both sides of the floor, scoring those easy baskets, looking for look for Mike Young and the Terriers to go to him early tonight. And yeah, Jackson averages 15 points in the team best, uh, just about eight rebounds a game. You saw the, the starters for UNCG, Massey, Alonzo, Troy, Galloway, and James Dickey, who has returned. Dickey returned uh, a few nights ago playing at VMI. It was his first game back since uh, the injury suffering uh, at Kentucky. They need James Dickey, especially in a game like this, to guard Jackson on the interior. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, they Spartans need to, to, to beat this Wofford team. They're going to need everyone healthy, everyone playing well. Big boost to the Spartans to have Dickey back in the lineup. So glad to have you with us here. It is 12 and 4 Wofford taking on 14 and 2 UNCG. Wofford in their road blacks. And the Terriers will have it to start things off here in the Coliseum. This is Murphy being hawked by Massey. Immediately they go inside to Jackson. He'll kick it out to McGee. Work it around to Hoover. His first three clanks badly off the backboard and ricocheting off Francis Alonzo's wrist there, it looks like. And Terriers will have another possession here. I thought the officials were going to discuss it, maybe go the other way, but staying here. Good defensive presence so far. They went right inside to Jackson like I anticipated. Early on anyway, we see Alonzo guarding McGee. So shooter on shooter. We'll see how the matchups play out here as this game goes forward. McGee with his touch right now. Back to Hoover. He'll turn, fire, and left it short. Dickey away with the rebound. And the Spartans are going to play a little bit of a stay home against McGee. No help defense, denying him as hard as they can, trying to make him put it on the floor when he does catch the ball. Galloway rises for a three and a little off the mark. Both these teams may be a little too amped up to start off play. Well, I think both coaching staffs had particular plays and things that they want to go, go to early, little counters to their main offensive motions. And so far, both defense has been stepped up to, to the occasion. Jackson back to Murphy. He'll come up high to Hoover. Shot clock under 10. Alonzo now on Hoover back to McGee. Breaks free off a screen and drains his first three-pointer. Just did a little duck-in screen that time. A little pin-down action to get McGee over the top. Another, doesn't even have to have his feet set. Just throws it on up there, sinks it. Tinky working on Jackson on the low blocks. Off the mark and the rebound controlled by Wofford. Terriers will push it with opportunity. If not, they'll get into their sets. Yeah, 83 points a game they average, so they definitely want to score. Focus on that side, make teams kind of out, outrun them offensively. Here's Murphy again, shot clock winding down. He's in trouble on the baseline, finds a cutting Jackson, dunks it home, and a reach-in foul will go on the Spartans' James Dickey. 
And Wofford doing an excellent job here, spreading the floor, trying to trying to get space for drive and kick opportunities. You can see right to the baseline, knows Jackson's going to be there somewhere. Just kind of flips it to him. Big catch and finish for the Wofford big man. Yeah, if you're James Dickey, you just kind of got to let that one go. But the offensive rebound goes into the hands of McGee. And a great start for Wofford at 7 to nothing as Alonzo trying to force it and sees his shot swatted away. Trying to push it right back. Good job by Alonzo trying to, I thought he might have spotted up with no rebounders, but saw he had a little bit of an angle trying to draw some contact going to the hole. Isaiah Miller has checked in for UNCG, second leading scorer on the team with 14. He comes in for Massey. This is Miller with the ball here. Can't get by Aluma. We'll drop it off to the corner to Alonzo. He'll penetrate in. Feeds Dickey back out to Miller. Around the horn, Galloway's second try. And all black jerseys underneath. It's good ball movement, but really good defense from Wofford closing out quickly and everyone that received the pass. You can just kind of feel the intensity in this game early on from both benches. Wofford kind of feeling it right now. Coach Miller not happy with that defensive effort, those rotations, getting a quick timeout. Quick timeout as Wofford with a couple threes here to start the game as they lead it 10 0. And Wes Miller, as you said, going to talk it over here. And this Terrier team can score points in a hurry, as you mentioned. And you look here at McGee off the screen. And the Terriers, four of six to start off play, two of three from three. And you just have to close out a little bit better on Hoover there, don't you? Yeah, you, both of those guys, you want to make them put it on the floor. It looked like that last play, Galloway was waiting for a ball screen that never happened. you got to fight him over the top of that screen, have a big show underneath from the guy defender guarding the ball screener. I'm sure those are the kind of the technical things Coach Miller is working through right now on the defensive side of the floor with his team. Wes Miller going to his bench as Eric Hamilton comes in for James Dickey. So kind of measure Dickey's minutes here. Just getting back into game shape, getting back into the flow of things. This is a good matchup for Hamilton, though. Good matchup with him and Jackson. Hoover on Miller will shake him, goes down the lane, has it stripped away. Galloway will save it to Alonzo. He'll throw up a floater and rebound down to Murphy. UNCG 0 of 5 to start this game. Hoover going to drive in. High Archer off the glass. Good for two. Yeah, it seems like both sides are getting similar shots, just the ones that Wofford is throwing up there are going in. The Spartans cannot get one to go down right now. Well, trailing 12 to nothing to a Wofford team, which can score and guard a lead with the best of them. Hamilton squaring up on Jackson. Nowhere to go there. Muscles his way up, had it rejected away. Tried to grab it back, and it is all Wofford. Here in the early going, Murphy spins around. Back out McGee. McGee again for three. You can see the pace Wofford wants to play. Want to get you scrambling a little bit offensively so they can get the ball to their shooters. And just when you think you closed out on them, they're going to dump it inside to, to Jackson. Troy drives in and falls to the deck. Right now, the Spartans trying to force it a little bit, maybe, as the Terriers' defense has been solid. Wofford off to a great start here on the road, blanking Spartans by 12. Find your way here to a vibrant campus in the heart of a thriving city, where teaching and research inspire discovery and ignite change. Find your why, your voice, your place among students from all walks of life. Find your connection, your community, your legacy in a proud family of Spartans. Find your purpose, your journey, your home. UNC Greensboro, find your way here. The Madness of March begins in Asheville, North Carolina. Make sure you're at the U.S. Cellular Center March 7th through the 11th for the 2019 Ingles SoCon Basketball Championships presented by General Shale. The action on the court will be intense as teams battle for a SoCon Championship and a berth in the NCAA Tournament. Book your travel and tickets by logging on to SoConHoops.com or by contacting the U.S. Cellular Center box office. The Madness returns to Asheville. Get your tickets today. 
These are the student athletes. This is where they battle. These are their home. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. This is where titles are forever. This is the Southern Conference. Great start for the Terriers here in the Greensboro Coliseum. Five of eight shooting from beyond the arc. Two of four from three as they are blanking UNCG here at home. Spartans just cannot get anything going offensively. Maybe trying to do a little bit individually too much. The Terriers defense has been solid. Well, the Terriers are shutting down every screen, every ball screen, every movement away from the ball. They're being aggressive. They're jumping it. Every time the ball goes inside, they're just sort of anticipating where it's going to go. They're just a little sharper right now than the Spartans. You can't do any better defensively than pitching a shutout. The UNCG has to come up with some counters here quickly. And it will be Walford basketball out of the timeout. And Gerald, you touched on it a little bit in our opening comments. UNCG has won four straight against Walford, including matchups in the Southern Conference Tournament. And a lot of these players, which are on the floor for both these teams, have been a part of those wins for UNCG and losses for the Terriers. They remember it. Yeah, at some point, you know, just as a player, you just take pride, and I'm not just not just can't stand for this anymore. And I think that's what we're getting from Water Wofford right now, doing everything they can, kind of playing with their backs against the wall, even though it's the third or fourth game of the Southern Conference season. Four on the shot clock. Hoover swings it out to Aluma. He just does get it away, and a defensive stop for the Spartans. We'll see if they can convert on the other end. Caleb Hunter has checked in, wearing 44. Troy will drop it off inside to Hamilton, muscles it up, and again, unable to convert inside. Good rotation from Wofford that time. Aluma there being big, standing straight up and down, getting the block. Fade away by Jackson, has him pumped up, and it's 14 to nothing, Wofford. Coach Young still wants these guys to dig in defensively. They know UNCG can put up their own 14 nothing run in a heartbeat. Miller down the lane, rises, fires, and there's your first bucket. Comes at the 14-33 mark. The yeah, way Wofford plays defense, they collapse on drivers. Very fortunate to get that shot off. UNCG is going to have to make second, third passes on a lot of those drives and hit open shots as they're available. Well, if the Spartans don't score, they can't get in that, into that 1-2-2 press either. Again, another good look for Walford. A great screen. One of the things Coach Young teaches really well is just screening away from the ball. It allowed Fletcher McGee to get a wide open shot. Just a great screen to get him open. He's got seven here early, does McGee. Three straight away, and again, missed badly yeah, Galloway's, by Galloway. Yeah, Galloway's forced the two shots he's taken. He's really forced. Murphy pulls up. He'll battle for it, and a foul, offensive foul on Kive Aluma, the 6'9", sophomore from Maryland. Picks up his first, and the first team foul on the Terriers. You see Wes Miller really upset along the bench, working his guys as James Dickey will come back on the floor. Substitutions for Wofford as well. We'll try to set those lineups for you here when we have a second. But this is Miller back out front to Dickey. James backs his way in the paint. Shut off and traveled with the basketball. Good defense by Chavez Goodwin, the 6'9 sophomore who's on the floor. Donovan Theme Love, Matthew Pegram, and Ryan Larson as well. Both teams scouting each other really, really well. Oh, Miller almost had one there. So you can really tell inside that they're forcing UNCG's big men to shoot over them and not doubling, not doubling and allowing opportunities for open jump shots along the perimeter. 
Theme love along the baseline, shot clock under 10. Hollowell here. Theme love had it blocked underneath. Dickey and Hamilton were there. Spartans will run, Alonzo in transition. Fade away along the baseline, and it's no good. He's trying to get himself going there. Good looking shot, just again, maybe just trying to force it, trying to stress a little bit down 14. Maybe not a shot that he's gonna shoot normally in a regular score game. Pegram will kick it out. Shot no good by Hollowell. He thought he got fouled, and now Dickey brings it into the front court. He's gonna go coast to coast and draws a foul. Let's see if they get him in the act of shooting here. He threw it up to try to get there. Let's see. Yeah, going to have him shoot two. You know, something Coach Mueller has really been working with Dickey on is being able to get the ball off the rim and go. It's a perfect example right there. Control, trying to draw contact, just shooting it out. Confusion as to who the foul was on. They signals, signaled in Pegram number 50, but I believe it should have been on, on Goodwin. And they'll work that out, get it to the appropriate number. And it was on Chavez Goodwin, the 6'9 sophomore. Came in from College of Charleston. And so now Dickey will head to the line. James just at 44% on the year. Team shooting 72%. Quick breather for Fletcher McGee, who's right back on the floor. Don't blame Mike Young one bit for that. Huh? <laughs> uh, he averages just a little over 30 minutes a game. You're going to try to steal minutes when you can during media timeouts and breaks and fouls and that sort of thing. And on the free throw, let's see, Miller was battling with Goodwin. Lane violation, lane violation. number one, I think. Yep. And Goodwin. So James Dickey will have three here. <laughs> Left them all. 16 to two, Wofford. Coming here to the Greensboro Coliseum, both teams undefeated in league play. Couldn't have drawn up a, a better start if you're a Wofford right now. Another loose ball rebound to the Terriers and another possession. Caleb Hunter trying to keep up with McGee. He goes back door, flips it deep to the corner. Inside Goodwin, kicks it out. Pegram wide open. Missed it. Good rebound by Hamilton that time. UNCG taking a lot of gambles in the half-court defense, trying to go for steals. Wofford going to make them pay if they continue to play that, that over-aggressively. Hamilton to the free throw line. Nothing dropping in for UNCG right now. Spartans are one of 11 to start this game. Larson, pass deflected by Hamilton. Hunter diving for it. And last touched by Hunter, but you like Good the hustle. effort Good hustle. if you're UNCG. And immediate timeout. Here with 11-21 to play. All Walford here early. Back inside the Greensboro Coliseum, all Wofford is a lead at 16 to 2. We talk about McGee and Alonzo, the two sharpshooters for each, each club, Daryl. And you, you look at the numbers, and both guys destined, if you retire numbers at your respective schools, maybe to see their numbers in the Raptors. Yeah, 2,000 points is a lot of points. Both, team, both players hovering right close to that. McGee obviously over but it just shows you the amount of work they've put in, the amount that each team depends on them. And right now, McGee is kind of, McGee and the Terriers are taking it right to Alonzo and the Spartans, punching them right in the mouth so far. Well, these two players make big shots for their clubs, and they've done it throughout the year. As a matter of fact, last week it was McGee who had 20 points in their win over Mercer, but he hit a big three with 38 seconds left to put his club up, up by four. And it was Francis Alonzo at VMI, who hit the three with under a minute left to play to put the Spartans up and enable them to win that ball game. But right now, McGee has had the better start here with seven points early in this game. 
Under 10 on the shot clock. For Walford out of the timeout. Hoover got to create, throws up a runner, hangs on the rim, and there's Jackson to clean it up. And a 16-point lead for Wofford. The Spartans have only scored two points. They average about 80 on the year, but nothing is coming on this offensive end of the floor and give the Wofford defense a lot of credit. Tiki. One on one, kicks it out to Miller. He's got the only bucket, can't convert. Dickey up and under, tried to dunk it on Aluma, and a foul will go on the Wofford big man. Yeah, Dickey has the springs, but Jackson's got 250 pounds. You're kind of seeing that come into play here. Jackson kind of moves him out of the way. Nice up and under. Going to go in there, go in there strong. Use the backboard or dunk it. Dickey chose the latter. Maluma will pick up the foul, and James Dickey is at the line. And he's missed three now, but really four. four yeah. count, the, count the second attempt at it. Cannot get the thing to roll in. I think everyone in the great jersey right now needs to see it go through the rim a couple of times. Hunter and Miller sub out. Angelo Allegre on for the first time. And James Dickey, the redshirt junior, reigning Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year and can't get it to go down. And another violation on Wofford at the free throw line. And so the Good second, again. second straight trip, James is going to get three attempts. And there you go. one to drop in. There you go. They get that first one to get in there, get that press set up. I see what's what. Murphy over the top of it to Hoover. He'll give it right back to his sophomore point guard. Malik Massey with the assignment on McGee now, and a turnover as McGee and Jackson unable to hook up there. That was a great job by Massey that time, forcing Fletcher higher than he wanted to go, further out to get the pass. Good defensive pressure, no passing angle at all. All he could do was basically throw it out of bounds. Jackson had no chance. Alonzo turns and fires. He can't get it yep. to drop down, and then Allegre picks up the whistle. So Alonzo now 0 of 4 from the field, but he's 0 for like many Spartans are. They're just 1 of 14. Yeah, a lot of pressing on the offensive side right now. Great, yeah, good credit to Wofford playing solid, aggressive defense, sharp, anticipating cuts, anticipating screens. Doing a really good job of taking UNCG out of any sort of offensive rhythm whatsoever. Midway through the first half here in Greensboro, it has been all Terriers. Spartans in their press. Wofford works it around. Goodwin on the baseline. Murphy will give it right back to him. He's bottled up, steps through though. And the sophomore has his first hoop. Allegra left to double team, he was there. Had him trapped and let go. Good job by Wofford, Wofford post player just to keep his composure. Alonzo trying to shake free from McGee, he'll drive in. Lost it in this. UNCG offense is just really stagnant for the Spartans. Forced to go one-on-one -on -one a lot. And Troy, <laughs> a senior, finally ends the drought. The answered prayer, but every time Spartans need a kind of answered prayer shot, it's oftentimes Demetrius Troy knocking it down. Murphy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be a moving yeah, screen yeah. on Can't Goodwin, who just flattened Malik Massey. Can't do that. You know, he may have been pushed out of the block, but still, that's good defense. It's sort of a karate chop there. Let's take a look. Galloway fighting him. A little too close on the contact there on that what looked like maybe a dribble handoff potentially or yeah, try turned, thinking about it anyway. Turned his body into him. Yeah. Alonzo down the lane, hard shot, missed it. Nothing easy for Alonzo as he's trying to drive it in, but Walford's so good in the paint. Galloway gets a steal nearly. He's fired. Let's see, him and Jackson tangled up a little bit here. Yeah, trying to get Walford the loose ball. Yeah. Going after on the sideline, just playing hard. 
Coach Miller was going to jump in there, I think, and try to save that like he used to back in the day. <laughs> well, Jackson, Cameron Jackson, a senior, very proud player for Wofford. It's a tough one-on-one -on -one matchup for Galloway. Just a lot of strength that Jackson has. And Hoover converts. Third made three of the half for Wofford. So they'll match the Troy three. Lonzo drives in, trying to draw some contact. and spins out for the sharpshooter from Spain. Nothing coming easy on the offensive floor at all for UNCG. Meanwhile, Walford, they don't get the early look they want. They just back it out, run their set. McGee lets one ride, and it's good. Can't do a whole lot about that. And Wes Miller is going to call his second timeout here in the first half as the lead has pushed out to 20. And Fletcher McGee making his presence felt here in Greensboro. When you're feeling hungry, you don't want to mess around with a quarter pound meat sandwich. Instead, eat the new half pound roast beef sandwiches. Eight ounces of thinly sliced, tender roast beef. And if you really want a quarter pound of beef, that's cool. Just eat half of one of these. Arby's, we have the meat. has it been a better time to join the Spartan family? For as little as $100, you can join the Spartan Club and power the success of our student athletes. Visit SpartanClub.org today. The Spartan Club, supporting student athlete success since 1986. Walker clicking on all cylinders on the offensive side of the floor. They've made four of their last four from the field and just have opened it up into a 20-point lead here. Yeah, you can see all those shots coming from the inside to start off. Offensive rebounds, getting inside the Jackson, that just makes it a little bit easier to get those jump shots off around the perimeter. Wofford right now clicking on all cylinders. So what does UNCG need to do here on the other side of the floor to, to get a good look? Sparks just 2 of 16 to start this game. Well, I, I think one of the things they have to do is spread these guys out a little bit more. Their UNCG is not going to be able to dribble the ball from the top of the key all the way to the basket. They're going to have to drive and kick, drive and kick, get that ball reversed, get them moving. Wofford's going to play a defensive style that kind of preventing the drive. So they're going to have to move it around the perimeter. They're going to have to screen away from the ball, get some action going, two, three, four, five passes of possession, and make them work. Well, Miller just takes or, it upon himself. Or <laughs> just give the ball to Isaiah Miller, let him drive the length of the floor. One or the other. Miller's got four of the Spartans, <laughs> eight here. And that's why I'm sitting in this chair. <laughs> just clear out and... Let your most explosive player try to make a play. 26 to 8, though. Wofford in complete control as Jackson will fire a three. Clanked it. Uh, UNCG off a rare miss by Wofford. Can they convert on the other end? Miller going to try to do it himself. And nothing doing on that trip. You kind of get a little concerned about that. You're down 20. Everyone tries to do it themselves, play a little hero ball, try to see if they can get hot, and that's just playing into Wofford's defensive hands. Under seven to play first half. Hoover in trouble, gives way to Jackson, four. Now on the shot clock, big fella drives in, and should be a, let's see, a jump ball. 
And it'll be UNCG possession. With the block underneath. I think it was Galloway got a hand on it. This crowd was waiting to explode for this game for their home team, but Spartans offensively, it's just been a rough going, much like that possession there. Yeah, Isaiah trying to turn a corner, turning a corner that never appeared, has to pull that back out and run a counter, run something else. Again, it's going to be hard, one ball screen, driving all the way to the basket to get a good look. And up 18, Mike Young can continue to go to his bench and just bring in fresh legs and let his starters rest a little bit or some of them. Shot clock under 10. Massey lets one ride, missed it poorly. And Massey not quite ready and down the shoot that time. I think he was a little surprised that pass came. Troy trying to hawk McGee, just draws so much attention out of Hollowell and Goodwin. Spin in as Hamilton came over to help out, and Goodwin's going to hit the deck. Shaken up, but looks like he's okay. Hamilton out. Mo Abdul Salam will come in. Get some minutes inside for UNCG, and yeah, with Jackson on the bench, it's a good substitution to get Abdul Salam some minutes in this game, get him some touches, get a sweat going a little bit. Quick shot got out of this timeout. We're at five. McGee slips, and he did so by Miller, who just fell on top of him. And it's frustrating if you're UNCG with the shot clock winding down, and that'll put the shot clock back to 20. Just the third team foul on UNCG, only four on Wofford. It's been cleanly played here in the first half. The officials letting them play. They're playing solid. Each team wants to put their best out there. Don't leave it and put it in the officials' hands. Tough matchups that time. Someone was left open. Yeah, Lucy's Larson, scrambling a bit. Larson gave it up. McGee won't let it go. And does fire it. Came up empty. I don't know if the defense, I feel like UNCG's defense, Daryl, has settled down. It's just on this end of the floor. They have just not been able to get in a rhythm at all. Zero, they're trying to get it inside, but see more one on one play. And that's not how you're going to get any action to the basket or score against this team. If it's just one pass, put the ball on the floor, and try to go all the way to the basket. That's playing into Wofford's hands. Hunter collided with Ryan Larson. Larson, a freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota. You see, you get two other black jerseys sitting right there in help side position. So even if the first man was beat, you still got to go through two other people before you can get to the hole. Hunter slow to get off the floor for UNCG. We'll go right back to the bench as Isaiah Miller will come in. 5.23 to play and UNCG not even in double figures yet. And as you said earlier, it's frustrating for the Spartans because they can't get into that press and get a rhythm going and really crank up that defensive pressure. So not making baskets. Hoover turns and fires and rattles into three. Five of nine from three are the Terriers. 29 to eight and whistle off the ball and a foul on Walford. But you know, Daryl, there's still a lot of time left in this game. Goes without saying a lot of time. But Walford is such a difficult team to come back from especially when they have a large lead like this. Yeah, for years, Mike Young's teams have been known for a couple of things. One is they don't beat themselves. And so UNCG, not only are they going to have to start knocking down some shots, but they're going to start coming up with successive stops to be, able to be able to make a run. Well, Alonzo finally breaks free and does so on the freshman and makes his first jump shot, and the crowd trying to get into it here in Greensboro. Desperately needed that one. Into the 1 2 2 press. Wofford has not had any difficulty with it here in the first half. Jackson gathers, kicks it out to Pegram, and his three off the back iron. 
And the Spartans put together successive hoops, and Alonzo, maybe with a little crafty play there, just stops at midcourt to pick up a cheap foul on Jackson. Trying to get him out of the game. He only averages 22 minutes a game, primarily because of foul trouble. James Dickey returning. Spartans have to get this to single digits by halftime. And it starts now. Four minutes to go in the half. You just look at all the Terriers right now. Walking the ball, good help side defense. He's not going to be able to go one on one. Dickey's going to try, and his jump hook is left short. Good defense by Jackson not to foul. Just use that big 6'8, 250 pound frame. The Spartans still have not been able to score on successive possessions here in the first half. Jackson drives in, and it's 31 to 11 now. And Jackson has about 25 pounds or so on Dickey, and he's using all of them to his advantage tonight. Alonzo behind his back down the lane. Floater is strong, but again, help side defense yep. came over. It's all one pass and make a move. One pass and make a move. 3.14 to go. Wofford by 20. Well, we talked about Fletcher McGee as a shooter and Francis Alonzo, but Nathan Hoover saying, don't forget about me now, guys. I can fill it up as well. He's three of four shooting threes here. Yeah, he's got deep range. The scouting report is going to make him be a, put it on the floor. He's always been a pain for the Spartans the past three years. He's been on the floor. Even when McKee has struggled, it seems like Hoover has always been able to hit shots against the Spartans, continuing, in, continuing that in the first half tonight. Well, Hoover is a guy who shoots 44% from three. He was 9 of 12 from three and scored 30 in the win at South Carolina earlier this year, so it shouldn't come as a surprise when he fills it up. 3.14 to go, and I think the words that came out of your mouth a few moments ago were, Sparks has got to get this down to single digits, but they're trailing 31-21. You just got to get buckets. Right, you right? got to kind of forget about everything else at this point and just figure out what you have to do offensively to get that thing to go in a hole. Shooting 18%. I think UNCG is almost shell shocked the way this game has has gone for them. Yeah, they got to adjust offensively. A yeah, little, little more co cohesion on the offensive side of the floor. Meanwhile, Wofford has just drawn up a game plan and, and executed on both ends of the floor. Mike Young wants his club to close out this first half on a strong note. McGee trying to create some space. Pegram inside, turns, and again, shot clock winding down, and Walford able to get a good look. The playmakers Hoover and, and, and McGee making shots easier for everyone else. Good job on, by defense uh, on Alon uh, by Alonzo on McGee that time, but everyone else needs to pitch in as well. And Isaiah Miller trying to do it by himself. And he's had a lot of success doing that this year, not working against the Terriers in the first half. Got to go to something else. Hoover with a rare bad miss, but Goodwin is there to clean it up. He'll kick it out. Extra pass to McGee. Drives in, floaters up, no good, but a foul on the Spartans underneath. And it will go on Abdul Salam. Yeah, you can see Wofford passing the ball around the perimeter. Extra touches, getting closeouts. McGee going right past the defenders, drawing contact. That's, that's the kind of offense we need to see from the Spartans to get their offensive engine clicking. Now McGee, the leading scorer for Wofford, and leads the team in attempts from the free throw line also. 47 of 50 coming into this game, and 94% from the free throw line. 94% is pretty good. It's not bad. I think my nieces could look at that on a box score and say, yeah, you know what, 94%, that's pretty good. Two minutes to go here in the first, and Isaiah Miller. It's, it's working, but it's kind of playing right into Wofford's hands. One person dribbling all the way down and taking, a, make, taking and making a contested shot. Well, he's got six of their 13 on three of six shooting.
Pegram going to battle in on Dickey, and that'll be the second personal foul whistled on James Dickey. Yeah, that's Dickey doesn't need to slap at the ball there. Just stay between Pegram and the basket. Make him shoot over you. Maybe you can get a quick tip on the shot. But a slap like that with a strong post player, not a good play from the upperclassman. He'll sub out as Hamilton comes in. Just the sixth team foul on UNCG. Murphy rifles it to Hoover. Miller not about to let him get a three away. McGee does have some distance, but can't convert there. Galloway will clear it away. 35-13. Spartans have been behind this entire game. Fell behind 12-0 early. And have not been able to regroup. Massey shut off on the baseline. Lonzer tried to step back, but lost his footing. Miller again will pull up. Didn't get the roll. You just watch the different offensive possessions, and obviously it's easier when you're up 22. And this game, the shot clock's winding down now. I think Wofford's going to try a two-for-one setup here. 15 on the shot clock, 40 left in the game here in the first half. Murphy drops it off inside, and Goodwin was fouled with two seconds on the shot clock. Galloway trying to get in there and block the shot. Watch it here. But look how upright he is. Sort of a half step late getting over there. The two athletes going up. Contact made is going to get called on the defensive player every time. So Chavez Goodwin at the line at 36% shooter on the year. It's one of two, 36-13. Spartan's going to hold for the last one here. Fifteen left, and see if Miller keeps it himself. Five to shoot. Alonzo trying to break free. Gets McGee in the air, and his three <laughs> is good at the buzzer. What a struggle. But how you want to end it if you're Alonzo. Maybe that sparks him, gets him going a little bit this second half. Well, second made three of the game for Alonzo. And if there is such a thing as maybe getting some momentum going into the locker room down 20, maybe that'll do it. 36-16 here at the half. begins in the heart of a Spartan. It is the dream which drives us to greatness. It is forged in competition. It demands the sweat and sacrifice of preparation. It ends in championships. And it's a journey like no other. It's all about the G.
Welcome back inside the Greensboro Coliseum. We're at the half. It has been all Wofford here tonight. 36 to 16. Terriers have led the entire way. They've led by as many as 24. And Wofford right out of the gate took it right to UNCG as they started off the game on a 12-0 run and three-pointers falling for the Terriers here in the first half. Hooper has made a couple of them. Of course, Fletcher McGee as, has as well. Wofford 5 of 12 from beyond the arc, but not just outside shooting for the Terriers as inside Wofford outscoring UNCG in the paint as well, 16 to 6. So think about this. Wofford has made five threes. That's 15 points. Inside, they've scored 16 points. So basically, here tonight, they have split their scoring inside and out. You really can't draw it up any be better if you are Wofford here tonight. And for UNCG, the Spartans have just really struggled to get anything going offensively. Francis Alonzo hits this three to close out the half to cut the lead down to 20 as Alonzo two of nine and two of three from beyond the arc. But you look at the percentages and that tells the story a lot here. Darrell Wofford shooting 48% and UNCG shooting just 23% here in the first half. I think you could say a lot of that's due to Wofford's defense and a lot of that's due to UNCG's lacking on the offensive end of the floor to execute what they're trying to do. Yeah, on offense, UNCG is really playing right into Wofford's hands defensively. They want you to just dribble all the way to the hole, not a whole lot of passes. This has been the fewest points UNCG scored in a half all season long, have a long road to climb to get back in this game in the second half. They can do it, but they got to get a, get a lot of things right here in the second half. Well, it can be done. The Spartans will have to come from down 20 if they're going to do it here. All Wofford here at the half in Greensboro. Thirty-six, sixteen, our score here at the half in Greensboro. A couple of other games going on around the SoCon. Uh, this one, I'm sure, is making headwaves yes. in terms of what the score is. Look elsewhere and down in Charleston, East Tennessee State up by seven. Western Carolina and Mercer in a tight one, and Furman, who will be here next to take on UNCG this coming Saturday, winning on the road at the MI. That's a lot of points in that Western Carolina Mercer game. It seems like Mercer is having another one of those tough luck seasons where they're just not able to kind of get over the top so far in any of their conference games. Well, Wofford has led the entire way here in Greensboro. Set to start the second half when we come back. Well, for a team that averages just about 80 points a game, goes without saying the lowest halftime scoring output of the season for UNCG at 16. And they'll start the second half trailing by 20. And immediately, Let's see, a foul on UNCG. Here's a foul on Dickey on the SWAT, I think. Oh, they got on Galloway. Second foul of the game on Galloway. Both teams in good position in terms of yeah. fouls as there weren't a whole lot of whistles in the first half. Neither team got into the bonus. UNCG going zone now for the first time here tonight. Boy, a tough team to zone against with shooters and Hoover and McGee for sure. Certainly leaves gaps inside because you know you have to step up. But changing defense has been effective for the Spartans so far this year. Tiki swats away Murphy's shot with one second on the shot clock. And the Spartans about as animated as they have been all game long here in this early possession defensively. Tiki active hands, never out of the play defensively. So one second on the shot clock. As Murphy will inbound it. I have to go retrieve the ball from down the hall, I think. <laughs> Hoover lets it go, didn't get it away. It dropped in, but they waved it off immediately. But still, you see the shooting prowess of, of Nathan Hoover here tonight. 
Yeah, that wasn't close. They don't need to. They don't need to take a look at it. Well, Mike Young out on the court. There was less than a second. I suppose they can, but it wasn't close. Well, Mike Young has requested them to take a look at it, and they will. Heck of a shot, though. Heck of a shot. Miller getting the explanation and we were watching coach Miller come out of the locker room out onto the floor with his team and then right before their last huddle and you could see what the eighth year head coach is trying to keep his club into it really uh, emotionally I think and the start of this first half is going to be big no question about it we'll see uh, there's no light around the basket so you can't quite tell you have to see the shot clock Officials taking a good look at it. Spartans here at home currently tied with second-ranked Michigan and third-ranked Tennessee. This is a shot clock violation uh, for the sixth longest home winning streak in Division I. Mm. 17 wins straight here at home going back to last year. They're going to get 18. It's going to be a memorable one here. Yeah, it will be. Will be a second half for uh, second half for YouTube if that's what happens. Miller immediately drives on Hoover and picks up a foul on Hoover. <laughs> Quick grip and go. Miller just gets the step, draws contact. That'll be another way to come back, get these guys in some foul trouble, start chipping away at the free throw line. Spartans in the first half, shooting just 23%. Tiki gets an offensive rebound, he'll kick it out. Good decision. The ball's not really changing sides of the floor. A little bit of a rotation there, getting guys to jump out on ball screens, that's something. Second ball screen. And Alonzo will be whistled for a travel. As he tried to create contact with Jackson, and Wofford is just so good at just walling up on the interior and just standing there, basically. Right? Yeah, there was more action to defend, though. There's one, two little, many little bunny hops. Murphy sees a mismatch on one side of the floor but he's going to wave it off and go back to mcgee who's got dickie on him here steps back jump shot away and good right away it's so tough to defend as james harden like right there mcgee now with 14. alonzo weaving through traffic trying to get by mcgee and Stepped out of bounds, so back-to-back -back turnovers by Alonzo, who's just trying to create something as a senior and a scorer, but has not been able to do it here tonight. Uh, but again, it's trying to create something individually. A turnover there, that's a nice aggressive trap, and UNCG has to, two possessions to go, they got some movement, some action. They're just not going to be able to do this one-on-one -on -one against a Wofford team that's up 22. Well, and Wofford, as you mentioned, doesn't kill themselves. That no. turnover is just their fourth here of the game. Troy surveying. Back to Dickey and around to Alonzo. He's trying to get the hands off McGee and then draws a foul on McGee. He's says, okay. <laughs> McGee getting up a crowd in him. Alonzo trying to create space. Let's see, there's going to be a push off there to get the hand away. That's fine. And then I think you're right. There was a little bit of a hook there from Alonzo, but one of the rules is you have to give your, off your offensive player some space. One of those new emphases this is for this year. <laughs> and that crowding and that bumping from McGee is the first thing that's going to get called. Floater by Troy is no good. And Dickey scrambling for it, lost it on the way up, and again, the Spartans come up empty. And as fired up and eager as they were coming out of the locker room here to start the second half, 
seems like frustration continues for the Spartans on the offensive side of the floor. Long three by McGee off the front iron. UNCG has not had anything in transition either. Well, Wofford really focuses on that getting back. Miller with a floater down the lane, left it short. Spartans still yet to score here to start off the second half. And you can hear the Wofford bench, the coaches saying, get into a gap, get into a gap. That's help side. Let's get over there, overplay the drive, switch from time to time. Really trying to eliminate this individual drives from the Spartans. Hoover lost it, stolen away by Troy. Hit ahead to Miller. Miller will drive in, layup is good. Push through there. Good defense, good defense. Keep your hands up and active, pitch ahead. That's the, you have to need three, four, five of those in a row to try to get into this thing. And underneath an answer by Aluma and a chance at a three-point play for the 6'9 sophomore. Dude, nice pitch ahead that time. Galloway in transition, but buys the, sh the head shoulder fake. He's gonna stay down on that one. And again, make him shoot over you. You'll have to go up and try to block it. Galloway and Isaiah Miller will check out for Wofford, Kibe and Luma. See the numbers on the year. Just a steady sophomore who's certainly improved in all facets of his game from his freshman season. He'll sub out as Chavez Goodwin comes in. Troy trying to set up Alonzo, can't get him to basketball, and a whistle off the ball, and a hold on Larson. So foul on Larson and our first media timeout here in the second half. 41-18, Wofford in control. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. It begins in the heart of a Spartan. It is the dream which drives us to greatness. It is forged in competition. It demands the sweat and sacrifice of preparation. It ends in championships. And it's a journey like no other. It's all about the G. Fletcher McGee and company up big here in Greensboro, 41-18. It has been a dominating performance by Wofford all the way around tonight. Spartan fans, we invite you to get your Spartans gear at the official online store of the UNCG Spartans, the Spartan Locker Room on uncgspartans.com. The Spartan Locker Room carries over 2,000 pieces of UNCG merchandise. Visit the Spartan Locker Room on uncgspartans.com now for everything Spartan. You think they sell rally caps? <laughs> if they do, they need to get them here stacked. Get them here immediately and we immediately. Immediamente. We're sitting next to the Wofford bench and near the huddle, and you can hear Mike Young is in his 17th season at the helm of the Terriers, and Coach Young is telling his group to stay aggressive here. 
Yes. Leading 41-18, sometimes the natural thought can be just to ease up a little bit. But they're going to keep the pedal to the metal here. They Again, they've lost four in a row, so they're not going to let up at all against the Spartans. They know what UNCG is capable of. Trying to work Alonzo off some screens with the freshman on him into the paint. Step back, jump shot, spins out. And that kind of night, two of ten now from the floor for Alonzo. He's going to drive in, wide open layup. And this communication at the top of the key, I was just about to say, with all the misses that UNCG has had, Wofford's done an excellent job of keeping the Spartans off the offensive glass. They've only had, let's see, four on the night. Hunter lets one go. Dickey will kick it out. James trying to create. Passes to Hamilton, and he's mugged by Pegram underneath. Well, every pass is challenged. Every angle is, is, is a battle inside. Wofford's giving no quarter right now on the offensive side of the floor for the Spartans. And Eric Hamilton will head to the free throw line. And Hamilton did such a good job of filling in for James Dickey took most of his minutes when Dickey was away. Eight points and nearly five rebounds a game. <laughs> Hamilton, a 75% free throw shooter, and boy, just nothing going in for UNCG right now. And both sides. I was hoping this rim would be a little kinder to the Spartans, but so far, not the case. Misses them both. So there's, a, there's a couple of games each year, that every, and every team has them, a couple of games where nothing goes right. McGee open for three, and it's good. And there are a couple of games a year where everything goes right. And I think we're seeing that happen simultaneously tonight. I think UNCG is having one of those two nothing's going to work nights, and Wofford's having that everything clicks night. And then when, you, when that happens, you get a, what are we, 22, 28-point lead. Galloway finally makes his way to the rim and is fouled. Has a chance at a three-point play. Goes through the drive that time. As he grows, I really would love to see him make that move in one dribble, not two, because you know, those two little half dribbles, you kind of see where he's putting the ball straight up and down. He's not taking up any space. When he becomes more comfortable, more confident, he gets to use his athleticism, push that ball out, get to the rim in one dribble, and throw it down. Well, Galloway answers the three by McGee the old-fashioned way, 46-21. Just over 14 left to play here in the first half. Jackson hands it off to Hoover. He'll drive in. Scoop shot. No good. Underneath, they'll battle for it. And last touched by Chavez Goodwin. And the Spartans will have it. Yeah, Goodwin, Jackson, uh, Pegram when he's been in there. Oftentimes, they're, they're the ones getting the quick early inside position. And UNCG is having to push them underneath the basket or try to tip the ball to keep it alive. Just another example of how Wofford's just a little sharper tonight than the Spartans. Troy lets one ride and missed it badly. Hunter underneath and lays it in. The basket's in the row. That's the first time all game, I, I believe. I say it may be, in fact, the first time they've gone back to back. Hunter nearly gets the steal. Pegram just spins away and flushes it home. Senior side. from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. A weak side defense that time from the Spartans. Could they get over and help? Galloway determined to get something going. Now he scored a couple buckets in a row. Almost Troy had a tip, almost. Had a hand on it, seven minutes or so into the 
Second half, 48-25, Walford. They have led the entire way. Hollowell clearing away to Hoover. He'll let one go. And oh, catch the wow. roll. That's what I mean about everything going right. Those shots go in if on those nights that everything's going right. They hit what, the rim three times, backboard. Meanwhile, Hamilton can't convert off the feed from Demetrius Troy. See how crisp Wofford's moving away from the ball, something the Spartans haven't been able to. Nearly stolen away by Troy, couldn't control it though. And Wofford will go back to their bench and bring in Aluma, McGee, and Jackson. The Spartans will counter with Alonzo and Malik Massey. It has been an impressive display by Wofford here tonight. Well, if the Spartans are going to make it interesting, it's going to start now with this lineup right here. They need to get themselves a little 8 nothing run or something like that. McGee leaves it short. Miller pushing the issue the other way. Kick Drives out. by Hoover. Kicks it out. There you go. Alonzo with a clear look at it. Best look of the night. Wouldn't go in. Yeah, that shot has to go in to make a run. That's good offense, good transition, extra passes. Boy, Isaiah Miller on the end of the, end of the floor down, and he is hurt as Hoover... It's a wide open shot, but a lot of concern for Isaiah Miller right now. All Wofford here tonight. Now you take a look again here underneath the basket, the scrum for it, and Isaiah Miller just looks like he just kind of got hit funny and was in some serious pain, but the good news is he hopped up on his own and uh, a little help from the training staff, and he's being tended to right now. 54-25 yeah, there, Walford. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. He came in there kind of ribcage to, to knee. That'll, that'll take some wind out of the solar plexus, if you will. He'll be fine. He's a basketball player. He'll shake it off. Well, Walford here in the second half, shooting almost 64%. 7 of 11, the Spartans just continue not to be able to shoot the basketball, but a lot of that is due to Wofford's defense. The UNCG just 4 of 12 from the floor here in the second half. Yeah, really, in, in, in every, I mean, I could list them, but really in every phase of the game, when you get this kind of domination coming out of the gates, Wofford just taking it to the Spartans uh, six ways to Sunday. Boy, there was so much anticipation for this game, and then if you're UNCG, it's still time left, but to have this happen to you when you're so amped up, first place on the line here early in the season. And Spartans are gonna have to dig deep here. This is a veteran group. Foul whistled on Alonzo, so there's great leadership. They're gonna have to huddle up here. See here, McGee taking it right into Alonzo. You see, this is basically the same kind of thing Alonzo does when he catches the ball. We talked about the pregame, how they're very similar in a lot of ways. There's a perfect example. He's stopping the whistle. I think the shot clock didn't yeah. quite start when it needed to, I think. I want to make sure they get it right here. James Dickey, Malik Massey. That look on Alonzo's face maybe says it all. Veteran group, but it has been a tough night. If you're a Spartan fan. McGee just breaks free, had it rejected by Galloway though. And UNCG convert on the other end. Troy. From the wing for three. Spartans now three of 13 from beyond the arc. Yeah, nice like this. It's like they're trying to shoot it. The basket looks like a shot glass right now. And for Wofford, it looks like a, 
a giant aquarium. As Jackson, right on cue, goes to the fadeaway. Haven't really called his name a whole lot here tonight. That's 10 points and, and four rebounds or so for Cameron Jackson. And the lead has grown to 31. Alonzo's floater drops through. Slice his way through that defense. Wofford right now trying to make sure they don't foul, don't put him on the line. But every shot is tough. Alonzo in the passing lanes, and there's a rare steal against the press. And last touch by Murphy, who nearly stole that away. First turnover on the press tonight for UNCG. That was Alonzo leading it. Alonzo let one ride and air mailed it. Good defense by McGee. Yeah, just a tough night all the way around for the Spartans. Midway point here in the second half, 56-27 Walford. Terriers come in here to Greensboro, perfect 4-0 in Southern Conference play and 12-4 and overall. Interested to see who they're going to call this one on. Well, they called it on Alonzo. Let's see. The Galloway stood still. And they called it on Alonzo, huh? Hmm. That one. <laughs> Curious one there. Wes Miller has been searching for answers for his group all night as Jackson now will have two free throws coming up. Alonzo and Galloway will head to the UNCG bench. Angelo Allegre and Caleb Hunter onto the floor. Well, at this point for the Spartans, and I think Coach Miller is trying to get his rotations in there. You got to understand that you're, you're going to see Wofford at least one more time, maybe twice. So now it's time to start tinkering with some things, try to figure out, get some new guys on the floor, get them experience in this game, and get playing against this defense. So the next time they get together, you can do things like that from the beginning and get your points that way. Hunter finding Hamilton there for a rare, and I mean rare, easy basket. McGee, and he's fouled shooting the three as Hamilton charging at him. Just ran him over right in front of the Wofford bench. You want to find, you got to know where he is crossing half court. A little too much space. I know you want to protect against driving, help side defense and all that, but you've got to know where Fletcher McGee is and shade to him every time he crosses over half court. Well, it's a couple times against the, the press where Wofford has been able to find him in that corner. Mm -hmm. You're just going to know where he is. He's not not just a, your average player back there. He's the all-time leading three-point shooter in SoCon history. That's a lot of history. <laughs> that is a lot of history. McGee now with 21 to lead all scores. And he's been efficient, too. Seven of 13, I think, at the last check. Perfect from the free throw line. 61 29. Miller challenges Pegram. Hamilton underneath with a stick back basket off an offensive rebound. Hamilton starting to get in there. Good screens are allowing him to get a little bit of an angle, trying to get in front of the defenders to get rebounding position. Hollowell will kick it out to McGee, round to Murphy. Murphy is yet to score here tonight, but just been steady with the basketball, gets him in their sets. Sets up Pegram, and his three is good. Nice little pass fake, give him some space and some time. Shots are a lot easier to make when you're up. 30 or so. Well, Pegram was just 5 of 15 shooting threes coming into this game. And it has been that kind of night for the Terriers. Yes, yes, yes. 
you kind of get the sense that this game, a little bit for Wofford, is sort of the unleashing of two years of frustration against the Spartans. But they just haven't been able to get over the hump, and UNCG's been the team to knock them out of the tournament, prevent them to get back to the NCAAs. And it's all coming out tonight. Troy leaves it short from the line, and for the Spartans, they will, won't have a lot of time to feel sorry for themselves. Get right back on the court Saturday afternoon with a very, very good Furman club coming to town. For Wofford, they will continue on and play on the road at VMI before having three straight at home. Allegra just about got there. Under eight left to go. Honda really pressuring McGee. He'll float it to the corner. Two on the shot clock. And shot clock violation. One of the few times Walford hasn't broken the hearts of the Spartans at the end of a shot clock. Still, though, Terriers in control, 64-32. These are the student athletes. This is where they battle. These are their home. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. This is where titles are forever. This is the Southern Conference. Find your way here, to a vibrant campus in the heart of a thriving city, where teaching and research inspire discovery and ignite change. Find your why, your voice, your place among students from all walks of life. Find your connection, your community, your legacy in a proud family of Spartans. Find your purpose, your journey, your home. UNC Greensboro, find your way here. 7.41 left to play here in Greensboro. It has been all black and gold for Wofford, 64-32. And these two teams came into tonight's matchup, the only two teams undefeated in league play so far. Furman, East Tennessee State with just one loss. As we told you, Furman will be coming into Greensboro Coliseum this weekend. but. You know, the way the prognosticators thought about it anyway, you see your, your top four here with Wofford, UNCG, Furman, and East Tennessee State, and in some semblance of order, that's the way many thought it would go and, and end up before it's all said and done. Yeah, we talked, uh, I think, the last home game of the importance of winning your conference home games. That's what sort of separates the, the regular season conference champions from everyone else. There's a big road, could be, about to be, might be, big road win for Wofford to pull this off to kind of get that advantage over UNCG. Miller will spot up for three. And no good. And Spartans now three of 15 shooting threes. If you're just joining us and tuning in, Wofford jumped out to a 12-0 start to start this game. West Miller called a timeout, first media timeout. Score was 16 to two, I believe, and mm -hmm. was pretty much all over from there in terms of Wofford building and extending the lead. 
led it 36 to 16 at the half and have built upon that lead. Murphy's floater blocked away by Galloway with seven left on the shot clock. Still gonna play, pick it up on the defensive side. Still have to play full shot clock. Coach Miller won't allow that not to happen. You can't control shots go in or not. Definitely control your effort and your attention to detail on the defensive side of the floor. One on the shot clock, Hollowell's three. It is good. It I has see. been that kind of night. Yeah, like I said, it's a couple of two games a year for every team in the country. Everything goes right and everything goes wrong, and I think we'll see those games for both teams tonight. Well, it'll be the second straight game for UNCG where they have not shot the basketball well at VMI. They won most recently 71-68, but the Spartans only shot about 33% in that game. And again, the uh, charge whistled on Dickey. Cameron yeah, Jackson cool. just sliding in. That wasn't a charge, and Coach Miller not happy with the call. Gets a T for the effort. And wow, McGee misses one. Missed a free throw. Just his fourth All right, maybe not of the season. Everything's right going right for Wofford, but pretty darn close to it. Again, shooting for UNCG, and they mentioned after that BMI win that they stuck in it defensively and were able to still get a win after shooting the basketball so poorly. But here today, just have not had an answer and shooting right around 26%. It is hard to win any game mm -hmm. if you're shooting 26%. Credit goes to, I think, what Wofford has done here also, for sure, on the defensive end of the floor. McGee will let one ride again. Missed it wide open underneath. Aluma has it. Yeah, what Aluma it's always, always has inside position. Been really impressive that way tonight. Scouting report says that's the thing he does the best, and he does that really well. left to go and you're trailing here by 36 this is starting to put my math to, to question here <laughs> i got so, the calculator right here if you need it what are you trying to get out of these last six and a half minutes or so if you're west miller with your group on the floor try to get some semblance of momentum some semblance of cohesion try to get kind of back to some basics here to run the offense the way you want get the ball and the guys like dickie on the block let them do something defensively you want to seat effort but most of all, I think you want to make sure everyone's healthy and keep composed. Sometimes your frustrations boil over. The you know, calls don't go the right way. You saw Coach Miller get a, t, a justified T right there. But just want to keep playing Spartan basketball here, trying to get something to start get started on both sides of the floor. Off a steal, three on two break, great pass. Great fast break. So those kind of little things, something you can show on the film to say this is how we need to do it the next time we play down in Spartanburg. And certainly just from a pride standpoint, no one ever wants to get beat by 30. So they can get this down a little quicker, a little, little easier. It'd be a little, you know, not that this loss is going to be tough to swallow at all, but losing by 30 is almost embarrassing. Miller working on Aluma, his pull up, spins in. Five minutes left as the Spartans have put together three straight hoops here. A 6-0 run for UNCG over the last minute, 10 seconds. But moments like this, I was going to say, have been few and far between, but they haven't occurred. Scoop shot no good by Hoover. Troy will pack it out, gives way to Alonzo. To Troy, right back to Alonzo. He's doubled. And, well, let's see. One official called a block, and the other called a charge. And 
and let's see which way they're going to go here. Well, they I call a jump ball. Well, the outside official whistled an offensive Can't, foul on the baseline. Try to call both? On the baseline, you didn't see the other official call a block. <laughs> Coach Young saying it's a foul on both. It's a charge and a block at the same time. It's kind of like that uh, call in the Eagles-Bears game where it was a fumble after a completed pass, but the referees blew the whistle too early, so they couldn't call the fumble, so they decided not to call the completed pass, right. too. <laughs> so a foul on both. First time I've seen that. And eight. Or check it, 20 on the shot clock, and Alonzo misses from the corner. And last touched by UNCG. 68-38 to score, and Mike Young is going to bring his starters back on the floor, and on his end of things, sees the play maybe get a little sloppy, and he wants them to remember how well they have played and close it out strongly. Yeah, they want to finish this all the way through. The marathon isn't 26 miles, Scott. It's 26.2. I talk about this a lot. <laughs> Don't let that two-tenths of a mile be the difference between finishing and not. First place and not. And that's exactly the message Coach Young's trying to send to his, send to his team here. Aluma again on the offensive rebound. Jackson on a mismatch has Alonzo there. Hunter comes over to help. Drives in on Jackson and creates some contact to draw the foul. And 3.32 left to go. Maybe a timeout here in Greensboro. Wofford shooting 50% for the game. UNCG 32%. You can just go through the statistics and they are all in favor of Wofford here tonight. 10 of 20 shooting three for the Terriers, a team which makes 10 threes on the season right at their average. But just everything has gone their way, and they have created much that has gone their way. Yes. Have the Terriers, and, you know, we were talking about what both teams are doing here to close out these last minutes of play, and the message was simple for, for Mike Young in the huddle. Just kept saying, finish the game, finish the game. Got to complete what they came here to start. I think at this point the, the yeah, win-loss is decided. Score may be still up in the air, but it's about more than that. It's about your execution and your discipline and composure on both sides, staying focused, and that's what both teams are striving for right now. So two free throws coming up for Isaiah Miller. Miller, the we'll check it one and one. Miller, the only player in, in double figures for UNCG, has got 10 points on 5 of 13 shooting. Alonzo is 3 of 15. On the other side, McGee, efficient, 7 of 15, 23 points, 14 points for Nathan Hoover. Most of those coming in the first half and 12 for Cameron Jackson. Jackson a little bit of trying to do a little too much too quick, didn't have his feet set that time. That's the second time they've run that play, or a version of that play here in the second half, trying to get Jackson the ball at the top of the key and let him drive. The lead was at 20 at the half for Wofford. They've extended it here to 30 for most of the second half. And under three left to go. Massey draws a whistle on Murphy. Coach Young, Young starting to empty the bench a little bit, I believe. And he'll bring in four new players. And a well-deserved hand for Hoover, Murphy, Jackson, and McGee as they all check out. And a 
one and one here for Malik Massey. And Alonzo take a seat for the Spartans along with Galloway and a lot of long faces here in Greensboro this evening. You know, kind of looking at the long view of the game, though, if you're, if you're UNCG, you know you can play quite a bit better. A lot of ways to improve, a lot of things to scout, a lot of things to see. I'm not so sure Wofford can play any better. I mean, first, certainly getting UNCG in terms of how they're executing defensively, the shots they're making offensively. So now it's UNCG's the opportunity to kind of turn the tables a little bit, you know, getting smacked in the mouth like this. Now they become the hunter a little bit. They know what they've got to do, what they have to change in the rematch and in conference play. Wofford's looking, going to look to maintain. So if you're looking for, for uh, Glass's half full uh, view of where we are right now, UNCG has a lot of room to improve in the opportunity against Wofford, and the opportunity is going to be there. Spartans came in having won seven straight ball games. And as we've talked about, four straight over a proud Wofford club. Allegra away with it underneath. He'll quickly fire a three. Dusalam will pick it up. Allegri one more time. Gets it to drop through. Get some guys off the bench, get them a little confidence. Hopefully that carries over not only to Saturday, but again the next time they see Wofford. Two minutes left to play, and the Spartans will be at Wofford about a month or so from now, February 16th in Spartanburg. Larson just about lost it. Shot clock winding down and a strong move to the cup by Goodwin. That's where Abdul Salam has got to learn scouting report. Goodwin all left shoulder, so you've got to make him turn the other way. You sit on that right hand, make him use his left. That's just something he'll develop an understanding for with more experience. Choice pass deflected. And Larson, Ryan Larson the other way as we approach one minute left to play. And a bump on Allegri. You see Coach Miller, the shot over the official shoulder there, kind of contemplating how to approach the locker room. These are always real tough situations as a coach, trying to figure out what's, what buttons to push and what to say. And really, this is one of those games where you go in the locker room and you immediately just huddle them up. Whatever the final thing is, you do and leave. You don't need to pontificate, throw chairs. I mean, everyone here knows exactly that this was not what Spartan basketball is about and how they needed to execute and how they needed to come out and play. Not a whole lot to say to add on to it. Just get out, get home, get rest, get another game on Saturday. I'll see you tomorrow at whatever practice time it is with film. Well, Wofford has officially emptied their bench now. A lot of guys getting some, some time here in the last minute or so. Michael Manning on the floor. Along with Drew Cottrell. As Allegre has his shot block there by Manning. And under a minute left to go, and Wofford will feel good about themselves here tonight on the bus ride back home to Spartanburg. Up by 85 here from Greensboro. It has been all Terriers from the opening tip. And they will back it out here. 72-43. All Wofford here this evening. 
And an impressive performance by the Terriers as they'll just dribble it away. And Wofford has improved to 13 and four overall and five and zero oh in conference play as the Spartans' seven-game win streak comes to a close. UNCG now 14 and three and three and one here in SoCon action. So for Daryl Koziak, I'm Scott Perswanski saying so long here from Greensboro once again. Our final Wofford big over UNCG 72 to 43 to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>